Hello, good evening, how are you? I hope you're all well. It's a lovely Monday evening, isn't it? Just before we get to the really, really cold weather. Now I know some of you will have already had some cold weather if you live up north, but us softies in the south, we um we we don't like it basically. <laughs> we don't like it. Um, yeah, so I hope you're all well. Look at you all coming in. My goodness me, lots of people. Um, we're up, we're going to be live on Facebook and uh, YouTube now. Look, if you um, want to go and watch the football, off you go. Um, because <laughs> obviously, and what does John say? You'll you'll never you'll never see it again live or something like that. Now obviously you can um, oh it's cold in Spain Mary that will never do. Um, of course you can watch this live anytime and of course you know it'll be on the website afterwards and it'll be on YouTube after well actually it's on YouTube now. <laughs> oh we got some um, Sharon from YouTube. Hi Sharon. Um, yeah, so, you know, if you want to go and watch football, fine. I'm not sure who's playing. I did know. Um, John did tell me earlier on. Oh, I can't remember. I can't keep up. Anyway, he's he's ensconced in his room watching uh, and hoping that, um, well, I don't know if anybody should win or not win. I, I lose. I, I, listen, I get fully informed after every match as to what the situation is in the um, charts. <laughs> you know the bits and you know what they do um i get fully informed so it's just that it goes in and then kind of you know kind of drifts out after a couple of minutes so i'm sure it's very important if you want to go and watch it um instead you go hello sarah um on youtube uh, we've got caroline as well diane we've got emma um karen as well that's lovely we've got cal and christine all got lots of lovely people joining us. It's really super. Leanne and Sue. Um, Sue says I avoid football like the plague. Well, I'm very lucky. I am. I am extremely lucky because John is an um, ardent f football fan. He he used to play. He used to be a player manager in his day. Um, and he was very good at it. He was in the local newspapers. He was in the News of the World, for those that remember that paper. So he, he obviously he's very keen on it. Um, but, but he has his own room with his own TV, you know, his own Sky, all that sort of carry on. So it doesn't come anywhere near me. <laughs> I mean, there, is, there are times I will go and sit with him just to keep him company. But most of the time, I just let him uh, let him get on with it because it is football kind of 24 hours a day, um, which is fine. I'm not I'm not judging or saying that shouldn't be the case much. Anyway, <laughs> uh, Jenny says um, no football for me. No. Oh, Jen, sorry. Um, no. Um, Sharon says what you is much better than footy. Well, depends, doesn't it? What about if I get a penalty? We've had a few penalties over the last few weeks with me. What was it? Was it last when we did the gnomes? When we did um, the gnomes, I got all my stitching all muddled up. That's got to be a penalty, isn't it? Or is it a red card? It might be a red card. <laughs> I don't mind. I don't mind. Send me off. I can have a little rest. I can go in the. You know they have a. They used to have a big bath, didn't they? I'll go and sit in there. I'm fine. Be like a spa. I'll be fine. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see how the evening goes. I might be there before I know it. Um, anyway, lovely to have your company. It's always super on a Monday. And of course, you know I um, alternate with our calf. And uh, just talking to her earlier, I know she's got a fantastic project lined up for you next week. But this week, we are talking about Popsy. Popsy, Popsy. So Popsy it is. There we are. You can see the pattern. And in fact, if I do that, you can see Popsy behind me just there, look. And it's very glamorous. And I kind of when I'm on, I, I was live on the website this morning. I don't know if you know, but every Monday we go live on the website. So not on Facebook, not on Instagram, blah, blah, blah. We are live on the website at half past nine every Monday morning with a sneak peek, a little preview there of the uh, Making It Monday project before we've even launched it anywhere. So it's quite nice to actually do that every week. And um, oh, yes. So this morning I referred to it as the uh, oh, somebody's brought me a bottle of fizzy tonic. Thank you, love. I was looking for wine. I've only got the one bottle. I've got sherry, but that's in litre-sized bottles. <laughs> and 
I said to John, I don't have any wine. Well, we don't. We don't drink, really. I might have the odd sherry. That's about it. But he's bought, he's bought me... It's probably... It's not far off, actually. Thank you, love. <laughs> anyway, anyway, I likened him, Popsy, to Elvis. I did really think that he looked like Elvis. And, and when, I, when I saw that picture, obviously I took the picture, but when I saw it kind of, you know, on the pattern, I thought, oh, yes, it could do with a fur trim. You know, um, what did they used to have? Uh, ermine. I mean, we couldn't, wouldn't do it now. Wouldn't do it now. Um, but, um, yes, they used to have fur trim around. And I could just see it. So I'm thinking to myself, you know what? You, you could trim that with fur. I think you could. It could be quite fun. Um, Poppers is gorgeous. Best one I have. Oh, how one I have seen. Oh, um, Popsy. Popsy. Thank you very much. Yes, it, well, it's funny thing. I woke up the other morning as you do, about half past four, as you don't, and um, suddenly I had this picture of Popsy in my head. How ridiculous is that? I liken myself to Beethoven. Beethoven would have woken up with a tune. I wake up with a Popsy. Yes, <laughs> and don't misunderstand that. Um, but yes, yeah, so um, I I saw it in my head and I thought, oh, that'll, that'll, be, that'll be a nice mim. And then, of course, I had to think about making it and how I was going to put it together. And I think, I know some of you might say, oh, can't you do it like this? Can't you do it like that? Do, do it however you wish. <laughs> I'm not one to tell you what to do. But um, quite honestly, I found this, this way the best because, you know, I always like to stitch a you know, the cylindrical part, the diameter, if you like, of a circular pattern, whatever it is, I like to do it with it unstitched. I don't like to use like, um, like a cylinder. Is that the right thing to say? And, and horses for courses, you can do it how you like, but that's how I do it. I do it so it's not joined and then I join it at the end. However, <laughs> let's move on. Um, Oh, Fiona says she often, often wakes up at that time up, but I usually have a cup of tea, I'm assuming. Yes, cup of tea. No, I don't, because that means I'd have to disturb John and then I'd have to have conversations about Sudoku and all sorts. So I won't. I just keep quiet. Try and get back to sleep. Sometimes I do. I'm very lucky. Anyway, Popsy was in my head. And uh, it's a great pattern. It's a great pattern. I'm going to have to follow it tonight because some, some of the things I want to make sure I get uh, in the right order. So you can see what I mean about Elvis, can't you? <laughs> and I have to say, uh, I didn't think too deeply about the fabric I used, other than it's gorgeous, but I, I used checks. And I was so lucky to get those checks because I didn't even give it a second thought as to how they were. And it's pretty much spot on. And, and I, I, like I say, that is pure luck. Um, because I wasn't taking a blind bit of notice of it. Um, but so, stripes, checks, all that sort of thing. Obviously, you are going to watch where they are sitting to make sure they're lined up. I was just too darn lucky for my own good. Anyway, that's my one bottle of um, of uh, whatever it is. I don't even know what it is. One bottle of wine. I don't know how long it's been in the cupboard for. I did dust it off before I bought it. Anyway, it's on that lovely circular base there. And like I say, you can um, zip it up. You've got a handle. So straight away, you've got a gift. Um, if you want to, you could pop a popper there. But I wouldn't bother. I really wouldn't bother. I mean, to be honest, you could probably tie it round if you wanted to and put a ribbon. Yeah, if you want. I, I quite like it like this. And actually, I think I'd present it to somebody like that. I don't think it would work lifting it. But you can hold it, can't you, and present it to somebody like that and I think it looks really attractive yeah I was quite pleased how it turned out there's some some um patterns really tick the box for me and others are just right and that tick the box so let me just get rid of my mobley shove it over there there we go done right shall we get going let's make popsy so I'm gonna pop you on the overhead so I can start straight away there we go hello got new nails sparkles couldn't decide I nearly went I nearly went red nearly went red and then I thought you know this is quite nice so nice sparkles look at that anyway let's carry on now then I've done I've done my cutting out so I've got and that's we'll keep that to one side 
So I've got my base piece, which I'll talk to you about in a minute. Then I've got my handle, which needs to be pressed and stitched, so we'll do all that. I've got my zip. Now I did say to you about your zip being longer than what you need. Obviously I'm a little bit too zoomed in. I might zoom you out actually. Let me do that now. So excuse tomorrow's washing. Um, I, I'm glad I don't say next week's washing because that really wouldn't suit, would it? So let's just uh, pull that out a little bit. Yes, so if I turn that around, I, I really wanted you to have your zip longer. Um, mainly for the bottom end obviously we've got trees going up so mainly for the bottom end because you know what we're going to do we're going to take this slider off now I don't want you to worry about that let's hope that I can get it back on without too much fumbling um, but and I want you to split your zip now this is where we might have a difference of opinion right and that's maligning just as gorgeous yeah, I think this, is, this came from Abigail, I think. Anyway, um, so if you don't feel up to splitting your zip, taking your slider off, then keep it all intact and just sew as you normally would with your pieces. Um, it shouldn't be too difficult to do and make yourself a tube. Okay, a tube, not a cylinder. Same thing, I suppose. Um, and then you can put it onto your base as, as one big piece. Um, so it's a case of try it this way. You're only going to lose a bit of zippage if you can't get your zip slider on. If that's something that it, it's not a, it's not necessarily a skill, but you've got to keep practicing to to do it. And it's actually very, very easy if you just follow what I do. So I'm I've split my zip because I found that absolutely the easiest option. Yes, the fabric is gorgeous, isn't it? I nearly just did it in a sort of regular party fabric. And then I saw this in my cupboard and I thought, oh gosh, it's got to be used. And of course, the lining is just as gorgeous. <clears throat> right, so, I've, like I said, I've cut it out, but I haven't cut this out. Now, this is the pattern, obviously, you get for the base. And I deliberately wanted to show you how I did this. Um, I've layered up my layers. So I've got, that's my outer fabric. I've got my wadding underneath, which is stuck to my outer. And I've got my um, lining fabric. And with this pattern, how we finish off the base and the sides is either you can zigzag it or you can use your pinking shears to snip it. Whatever the case, it's buried right deep down. If I bring um, this original Popsy in, it's buried right deep down in here. So let's just turn it so you can see. It's right in there. Now, I mean, obviously you can undo it right to the base and people will see perhaps your zigzagged edge or your, zig uh, your zigzagged. But, um, gosh, this is going to be down to you whether you really, really want to um, spend a lot of time on it by binding it. Okay, by binding it. So let's pop that one back. So all I'm going to do is literally, now I've got my three layers, I'm just literally going to snip around. Now, I want you to talk to you also about the accuracy. You really, really, really want to be accurate with your cutting out because every millimetre counts with putting your base onto your outer. And I talked in the um, pattern about the uh, benefits of pi, Pythagoras, okay? And Pythagoras, you can work out what your diameter of your circle will be to the, let's say, the width of your fabric, okay? And so if you want to increase it, now I'm not going to, I am absolutely not going to go through with you how to do that. I want you to try and figure it out yourselves. But if you um, use the power of pi, you'll be able to calculate any circle and any tube that you make. Let's say it like that. So now that I have cut my circle out, I've got it all in my three layers. What we're going to do in a minute, I'm going to do my handle first. I'm going to stitch around that edge to secure it. It's really important that we do that because um, it, 
it it secures it so we've only got one piece of fabric to play around with which makes life so much easier okay so let's move on and I might I might bring you in a little bit because you are quite a long way away I'll see how we go I'll pin perhaps pin my zip on first and then bring you in right so normally we we are for a handle we would do a four inch wide strip fold the long edges to the middle bloody blah, blah, blah well she goes tell you as you go along but um this is only for a wine bottle you don't want a thick clumpy um handle so i've cut it down to well you'll see in the pattern what i've cut it down to um and please do support me by going and getting the pattern i'm, I'm you know at the end of the day you know i always say to kath we are a small business and we do rely on you buying the pattern and helping us out and keeping us afloat without you guys i wouldn't be here and that's the truth you you can do <coughs> excuse me you can do a certain amount um on a voluntary basis if you like or you know sort of giveaways all that sort of stuff but there comes a point when your day becomes so involved that you have to start charging a little bit and i don't think a pound at this moment in time is too much so i folded my long edges to the middle isn't that fabulous i haven't stabilized it there's absolutely no need and then you're folding again you if you think about it you've got four layers of fabric here and that is plenty enough to give you a fairly decent uh, rigid handle. So all we need to do now is take that to the sewing machine. <clears throat> oh, I've got a frog in my throat today. I bring it to the um, sewing machine and give that a little stitch. So we'll bring that in. Oh, look, I've got all my bubble trims. That's why, you know, I've got it. I'm going to, just going to move it um, because I was stitching Adrienne's beautiful, beautiful um little sort of um i don't know if they're bunny rabbits or hairs actually but the cushion i don't know if you own any of you saw the cushion i made um and i used the bobble trim so look all i'm doing is top stitching i've got my stitch length on three because it doesn't we're going to do two rows so it's strong enough if we needed it to be super duper duper strong then you can take your stitch length down but you really don't need to so we're going to go down one side i always do the two folded edges edges first um, and then just across the bottom and then up up the folded side so this is just the one folded side let's just get rid of that um, and try and keep it as straight as you can i know it's not easy for some you can always draw yourself a line you could use your tape to sort of make yourself a marker here um, but it, you you really want to try and aim for a fairly decent sort of finish to that okay so now we're here we might as well stitch our little base now in the pattern i've said to you to um sew a scant seam now i must be honest um I didn't pin the base to the tube at all, I just went for it and eased it as I went along. But you probably, because we're inserting a zip, so our seam allowances can change from one person to another, I'd probably be inclined to uh, pin it so you know it's going to fit nicely. Um, and we'll talk a bit more about it as we go along, so I'll just trim my little ends there there we go that's lovely oh Gillian says the cushion with the hair is gorgeous Kath says it's a beautiful cushion yes I was very pleased with it I was very pleased with it it's such a well first of all you're working with top quality products um, but secondly that the way that you put all your strips together is nice and super easy and it's, it's just a quite nice simple make so we've done the handle we've done the base so the next thing to do, I'm, I'll look at my pattern just to make sure, is to put the um, uh, the handles on the lining. Now, no, 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 I want to talk to you about this. I'm going to come and talk to you. I'm going to come and talk to you guys. In the pattern, I have pinned everything in the pictures onto the lining. Now, the reason why I've done that is because the lining 
was white and my bag, Popsy, was dark. You would never have seen in the photos very clearly of what I was doing. This instance, obviously we've got different colours, whatever, we'll see how it goes. I'm going to, I'm going to still put it on the lining, okay? Um, obviously, this is obviously the back of our uh, outer piece because we've got the wadding on it. Don't forget, you've got to put your wadding on. Um, and you'll see this on the outer, but I'll stick to what I've done in the pattern. You can put it on the back of the... Do you know what? It really, really, really doesn't make any difference. Um, it'll still hang. Let me show you. It'll still just come up in the middle of that seam, whether you put it on the outer or whether you put it on the lining. It makes no difference. And your zip sandwich is always the same regardless. OK, so I just wanted to say <laughs> the thing is, I can hear I can hear um uh, it's mainly our YouTube friends that always pick me up on these sort of things and um, it does drive me nuts. So what we're going to do is we are going to find the centre of our short, one short edge. If you've got directional fabric, it's going to be to the top. OK, so we'll assume this is the bottom. This is the top. So we're going to find our centre. <clears throat> and I'm just going to get my heat erasable. And I'm going to make a little mark there, just so I can see it. OK, now I'm going to measure out. So bear with while I do that. Um, so a little mark there and a little mark there. Obviously, all the details are in the pattern. So I've made myself my marks and this is for my handle, guys. Now, I know you're not going to see it very well. OK, I do appreciate that. But as soon as we start putting this on, you'll see where it goes. Now, I've got a little mark, which is the best one to see. Maybe there. Can you see that? Um, I'm putting my strap the other side of it. Oops, let's put it flat side down. Now, the handle has a double edge, double folded edge and a single folded edge. I pretty much like to put my double sided edge to the inside so as we bring this around it's on the um let's just do it it's on the inside of our curve there okay so so but that's up to you so i'm just going to base those pieces on because we don't like to work with clips clips can be really heavy especially on single layer fabric so it's better to base them to keep them in place so we'll, we'll go ahead and do that Let's bring you in. Has anybody got any questions? Actually, I'm sure the admin team will be um, will be on it. Now, let me just check my pattern, make sure we've got my zips in the right place, as I haven't looked. Yes, that's fine. OK, so I'm going to base. Now, I want you to base about a half an inch away from the strap. So I've started, let me get my little pokey tool in. I started stitching about here. OK, and I'm going to go straight across. There we go. I'm going to go over my strap and I'm going to carry on stitching, as you can see, about a half an inch um, away from the edge of my strap. OK, so that's stitched in place, which is fab. We're then going to start thinking about putting our zip in. OK, so I'll, I'll pin my zip in or clip my zip in, actually, and then um, I'll probably reduce this size so you can see it better. So what we're going to do, we're going to make sure that the bottom, this one, this is the top, that our zip is hanging over at least an inch. I don't really mind what happens up this end. Uh, would an open-ended zip work? Um, well, not, not really, because you would have to, well, yeah, maybe. Um, just thinking out loud. Yeah, probably would actually. I'm trying to think if there's anything it would 
I mean, obviously, when you stitch it all together, you're not going to be able to open it like like an anorak or a coat or whatever. Um, but maybe, yeah. I mean, the trouble is, I get hooked onto my zips by the meter, but certainly worth a try. I can't think that it wouldn't work, actually. Right, so... Um, yeah, so you want to overhang your zip by at least an inch. That's important. Don't care what happens this end, as long as it goes up as far as your raw edge. OK. Um, what's the name of this fabric? No idea, Catherine. No idea. You'd be, to be honest, you'd be ever so lucky if you could could get fabric that we show on demonstrations, because as soon as they do a print run, that's it. That's it. You don't get it again. Um, uh, they do a certain amount of yardage. I, sp I think it does depend really what, it, what the fabric is. But pretty much they'll do um, a print run of so many yards or bolts and send it out to, you know, their distributors. And then that's it. You don't see it again. It, it goes out of stock. So all I'm doing this side is lining it up. Now you want the right side of your lining and you want the right side of your zip showing. It's pretty obvious what the right side of your zip is. It's the side where you can see the teeth. OK, so right side, right side. You'll get yourselves into bother if you do it the other way around, but you'll only do it once <laughs> and then you won't do it again. So, um, don't try to match these up. I mean, get them roughly, but uh, just kind of, you know, you just, like I say, you just want about, well, that's probably about an inch and a half. But I have got, I have cut myself enough um, zip to do that. So I'm doing exactly what the pattern's done. And then you can see every stage exactly how the pattern is. It's I, I find that sometimes a lot easier. So right side right side and then we're put getting our fabric don't forget this is um, directional so this is the top this is the bottom okay so all I'm going to do is flip that over and you can see I've been very thrifty I've joined my fleece together my wadding so what I really want to do I'm not too bothered about the top I want to make sure that this bottom these bottom edges are meeting up nicely so if I bring that back you can see that they meet up quite nicely and I'm just going to bring my fabric over and I'm just going to clip that as well so it's all I've got a nice little sandwich layer going on so in effect you've got the right side of your outer and the right side of your lining facing and underneath there, you've got the right side of the zip facing your outer, which is correct. Well, I say it's correct. I'm sure it is. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Got me doubting myself. Right, so I'm just clipping this, up, this other edge here. OK, so there we are. Now, I tried various ways of doing this top edge. Um, with the zip and everything. I thought about tucking it in, folding it over um, and actually that's uh, still not quite right. I'm going to move that in a sec because look, can you see it's just not quite meeting. But actually um, put, just putting it straight out of the, the top there is, is absolutely perfect. It, it works beautifully. Right, so this is our bottom, bottom top. We can see the handle there, look, you can see it beautifully. So we're going to stitch from here, up there, along there, and down there. Okay? And then we can just snip off our corners a little bit. Is there a website, please? Website for what? There's lots of website. There's Amazon. <laughs> Do you mean website for me, Tigger? Um, Tigger's Eye, Tigger's Eye, yes, I'm sure one of the ladies will put a, a link in there. So we're going to stitch it just like we normally would. Um, now, I, I want you to consider this, I want you to consider this a lot. I'm going to take the stitch length down a little bit. Oh, I'm going to just switch the view so you can see, that would be handy. So... 
if you have a zipper foot that goes right up to the teeth of your zip, you are changing the width of your fabric. Okay, you're changing the width of your fabric. You're making your width a little bit smaller, which will probably be perfectly fine. Okay, because we can always do a bit of jiggery pokery on the base. Um, uh, Jackie says she has no sound. So could somebody write in there about going out of the um, Facebook page and back in again, please? Um, my little zipper foot is sort of almost halfway. St it stitches. It doesn't. I don't have any choice in the matter. It kind of stitches uh, um, nearly halfway along my zipper tape. Okay, and I can't change that. And again, that will alter the width of my fabric. So I want you to consider when you stitch this how near you go to your teeth. On the other hand, I don't want you to go right on the edge because if you went right on the edge, you're going to add a half an inch to your zip, sorry, your the width of your fabric. It probably wouldn't fit your base. This is the, we have to be quite exact with this pattern in a way. Uh, but don't do, don't do what I'm doing. I, I just, this, this foot that I'm using. So the foot, as you know, it's your zipper foot, will follow the teeth. So have, have stitch this with the teeth facing up and your zipper foot will hug the teeth. Um, it makes installing zips really super easy using a zipper foot. Um, and the, like I say, it, it will follow the zip all the way up. Now, actually, it would... Sod's law, excuse my, my swearing. Um, it's moved, my zip has moved. And I just want to correct that. So, and not, not far, a couple of inches, if that. There we go. So, just keep an eye on all your layers. So, you want your lining, your zipper tape, and your outer fabric sitting very nicely on top of each other. And I could feel the teeth, funnily enough, moving over to the left. And I thought, ah, I'm not catching it. So keep all those layers looking beautiful, lovely and flat and what have you. So I hope Jackie's sorted out now. Not sure, having to computer, get comments, sound on my phone, not sure why, but it's working. Oh well. Everything's different, isn't it? And all of our all of us have different um Oh, sorry, I want to go up the top there. Um, all of us have different um, devices um, and no one device fits all. Um, I, if I lose the sound on something, I tend to tap the screen. I'll, I'll go out of the, the live and come back in again because I often lose it with Abby. <clears throat> right, so um, quarter inch seam allowance now across the top. So I'm going across the top where my handles are. My handles are there, look. So now I'm going across the top. When you come to the handles, although we've basted them, I want you to make sure they are still sitting straight. I mean, it won't matter too much, but um, just, you know, try and keep them nice. And then I'm going to just undo all my layers because I do tend to like to have my layers free. Um, but you, you pin, you pin, you pin. So I'm just coming up to this top corner here. So I'm going to tuck my zip back in. And make sure that all sits nicely. Be careful, as always, going over your teeth of your zip. I mean, I'm just going to use my pokey tool, just my stiletto, just to hold that. And just carefully go over the teeth. And then I'm just coming down the other side. Again, I'm just going to make sure that all my layers sit nicely. And just make sure that zip tape doesn't move. Because if the zip tape moves, that's when you get a wriggly looking zip. Yeah. So um, just keep that all lined up nicely. And like I say, you want your foot to hug the teeth. Okay, so off we go. I'm taking my time and just lining everything up. 
It's a really nice, nice easy little pattern actually. Now if you haven't used a walking foot, you might find that your layers will have moved. The mine's moved about an eighth of an inch. Um, so um, it's difficult. I think some machines do have walking foot feet that um, has like a zipper like feel about it. Somebody did tell me once. I've never seen uh, quilters tape. Yes, of course, would help. It will sticks it all together. Um, you know, glue it. Use just your regular basting glue that you'd use for EPP. That would be fab. That works just as well. So let's let's get you in here. But well, I'm now going to zoom you in a wee bit. Okay. So again, apologies for next week's washing. That's a little bit better. Yes, so I'm just going to follow the pattern. So let me just see what I did. I'm going to make sure that I'm doing it right. <laughs> Turn through. Oh, yes, we're going to top stitch. <laughs> I've forgotten that bit. So I'm just going to trim this a little bit. Um, I'm not going to go right into that corner um, because actually, I'd quite, in, on this effect, I would quite like to have a rounded top. Normally we, we aim for points and all sorts of things, don't we? But in this instance, I want a kind of more of a rounded top. So just pop your finger in there. If you want to do fancy folding, you do fancy folding. Um, no doubt somebody will, will say. Um, and then just pull it through. Now, I always suggest you give these, these things at every stage a bit of an iron. So that's what we're going to do. Give it a little bit of an iron. And I just now at this stage, before we do anything, I want you to check. See how that zip just moves slightly there? Do you see it's slightly out of shape? So I could have pulled that back in a bit better. But now I want you to um, have a look at your zip and see if it's not too bad. See if you're happy with how it looks. This could come out a little bit, but quite honestly, I'm not going to spend huge amounts of time on it. Um, but we could give it an iron, which I think I'll do. Um, and then we're going to top stitch from the bottom to the top on just the sides. You can, if you want to, top stitch along the top. Um, but like I said in the pattern, uh, it will show. Now you might think, well, that's no big deal. But actually, if you want a really nice clean edge, let me show you again. If you want a really nice clean edge, then you don't want any top stitching along there. That's my thought. Because look, when I've top stitched on this side here, it's obviously it's come through to the lining. And unless your top stitching is absolutely gorgeous, you know, you're going to see it. So I would say leave well alone. Doesn't need it. Doesn't need it. A nice little press will help. I actually didn't press that one at all. I never have the time, it seems. So we'll give that a little press just to make sure it looks gorgeous. And we're going to top stitch along this bit of zippage, either side. Now, a little top tip here, guys. Do you see where, in fact, that's, I think that's where I unpicked that little bit, look, because I can see the stitches. Do you see where we've got a little bit out there? I'm not very happy with that. You can actually push your fabric a little bit more over right and you can make a faux sort of seam if you like and you can straighten up your zip um, and all I've done is push that fabric over and if you top stitch it down like that nobody will ever know that that was a little bit wonky okay how are we getting on is anybody making one with me this evening have we got um uh have we got, um, oh gosh, uh, Myra on the case and Diana on the case? Because normally they're um, stitching away with me, which is lovely. <laughs> I always look forward afterwards to see um, how you got on. Okay. Um, Sue has put a link on there for the fabric. Thank you, Sue. Right, I'm going to... Um, Put my stitch length back onto three again because this is just a top stitch so again 
just take your time just keep your eye on the width of your top stitching and when you get up to the top if you want to go along the top there but I'm not I'm just going to finish there and look that looks just gorgeous doesn't it really super so we'll come down the other side always go from the front because that's what mainly that's what you see let's just pull that out a little bit more it might be a little bit bulky there because we've got all sorts of zippage going on so only go where your machine wants to go nobody's going to give you extra brownie points for struggling certainly um, the recipient of your bottle of wine will like the wine more than your top stitching I think I can almost guarantee it and also while I'm at it while I'm chatting away <laughs> so there we are both sides done now I can trim my threads in a second okay um, so there's the main piece done so we've got a zippage each side a zip half each side we've got bits hanging on the bottom and on this side you can see that we've caught our lining beautifully now all I want to say about this is that this is a master of disguise because I'm using red thread red lining red outer okay if you did like my original one let's get it in again you're going to oh sorry i forgot you're on side view um you're going to see that red top stitching on your white fabric so do yourself a favor uh either top stitch in white which maybe maybe okay um or um choose your lining to suit the outer as well okay just a little top tip there full of them tonight so <laughs> oh dear oh dear so there's our piece done okay so the next thing i just checked my pattern i'm pretty sure we just put the base on yeah so the reason why i do it this way now look if you want to you could baste along here guys okay baste along here just like we did with our base you can secure all those layers and make that super neat okay and also you're only working with one piece of fabric so I kind of suggest you do that but now what we're going to do is we're going to join our base to our um, outer piece I'm just going to snip these little threads off here excuse me for doing that so what I suggest you do that would look quite nice I don't suppose for a minute that will happen so what you're going to do is you're going to start right sides together so your outer fabric I'm sorry get it in a bit your outer fabric is right sides together with this obviously you're going to start wherever is convenient to you and while I remember we're going to stitch it the other way around we're going to put we're going to stitch it that way around and I'm just going to trim that a little bit because that's a little bit puts you off doesn't it so I'm going to ignore the fact that we've got a little bit of lining showing, uh, wadding showing. So yes, we're going to stitch right sides together with our outer pieces, okay? Right side, right side. But we always stitch, well, you can decide, but I always stitch on the straight edge. And I very, very rarely stitch around the circle because I can always make this fit to that, but not necessarily the other way around. If you want to, be careful now, you can go in and you can snip every, let's say, half an inch. And you'll notice I'm, I'm looking at the wadding rather than my lining. I don't want you to go, <coughs> excuse me, any further than a quarter inch in. In fact, I'd probably go less, okay? And just snip every, if you want to, every half an inch. It'll help you go around this curve. Right, so the other thing I want you to consider is this um, measurement here from, from that edge zip to that edge of the zip will never change, okay? That will always be whatever we end up with. 
what will change is the seam allowance on this. So for instance, if I follow this eighth of an inch seam allowance here, that's going to be a longer piece of stitching than if I stitch in. If I bring that stitch in to let's say three eighths of an inch going round to here, I end up with a very, very small diameter. So this won't fit that. So I want you to be very, very aware of where your quarter inch line is. And I want you to err on the side of caution and do a scant. So that's in other words, it's like a threads, a threads width away from a quarter inch. So you're making it a wee bit smaller um, because that gives you a bigger diameter. OK, that, does that make sense? For instance, if we did a, if we had a piece of fabric like that and we stitched it to there, that's not going to fit, is it? That's tiny. So imagine that that's a lot, lot bigger. So the nearer you get to that, the better. But obviously it's been designed for a quarter inch. I, I just want you to get the idea of where I'm coming from with this. So I'm going to start about an inch in. So I'm going to start stitching about there, OK? Because I want to have this bit free. Um, <clears throat> it's not going to be easy for you to see on the side camera. Um, you kind of got to trust me on this. <laughs> I'll just move my machine in a little bit. And what I want you to do is set your, set your piece up. It's not easy because I've got this wretched piece of... Um, wadding that's throwing me. I'm going to put my stitch length onto just just over the two mark. So can you see I've got my right sides together with my base, right side of my um, outer fabric there, and I've got my straight edge on the top and I'm just going to work my way around and I'm going to ease it in, ease it in all the way along. And I'm going to get to a certain stage, I'm going to stop and make sure that my zip teeth meet. So I'm going to do a wee bit of a back stitch, not much, just in case I have to undo it. Um, so here we go. So like I say, if you remember, your, the width of this never changes, but the width of your sit, stitch, your seam allowance here, if that changes, it, your base, your um, outer won't fit. OK, it's just, it's just a good little um, thing to think about and to be aware of. And do look up pi. Do look up pi. So as I'm going along, I'm just manipulating my fabric around that circle. It's very, very easy. There's no restrictions because I haven't joined my zips together. If I had a tube, that would be a little bit more tricky. And that's why I thought this would be a good way. So we're just working our way around. Like I say, I'll get to a certain little bit and then I'm going to check to make sure my zip teeth fit together nicely. So I'm coming, I'm almost round to the start now. So I'm going to see. And if I need to adjust, I can. So I'm going to take it off. This is, this is just how I do it, folks. This is just how I do it. This may not suit you at all, but it suits me. So if I bring that around, and if I bring that around to there, oops, if I can hold it, that's not a bad fit. So if I sort of hold those together like that, bring those teeth up together, we will get that right in a minute. I mean, that's, that's as near as damn it. I, I can get that in that little piece there. And then my zip teeth meet beautifully in the center so we can just carry on as we are so do check do check and like i say make sure that you haven't gone um you, like i say you want a scant uh quarter inch so again i'm just going to stop about an inch away just like I did before and it shows that in the picture it shows what it looks like like that okay so there's my base installed and that's my ends and I've only and I've got a kind my I suppose about a, I wouldn't my eyes, about an inch and a half gap okay so now what we're going to do is put our zip slider on 
and then we'll finish stitching our gap there okay so although it's um it's different oh hold on it's different to what you would normally do perhaps um so i've got something on my screen i'll just get rid of it this happens every week it's when i click click a button on me on my mouse uh, <laughs> Okay, so don't forget, we want to put our zip on the right side. So I'm just turning my little um, end through, my little sort of um, base through. So that's, so that's sitting. Now I've got the right side facing me. Yeah, let's just show you what that looks like. So there's my right side facing. And we're going to do what we always do. We're going to line our zips up. Now, I want to make sure that my zips are absolutely equal. So I'm just going to trim this one. Okay, just a smidge. And then I'm going to take about a quarter inch off the right hand side. Now you might find the left hand side easier. You might find it easier turning this around and pushing the zip away from you. Um, there's, gosh, there's all sorts of different ways that you can uh, put a zip slider on. Some people use a fork. There's gadgets out there, all sorts. But this I find the easiest thing to do. So the first thing you need to do is put it on one side. Okay. I'm going to just move that a little bit. Move it back a bit. So I put it on one side, and putting it on one side is always super duper easy. Okay. If I get that out of the way you'll see what it looks like. This side then when you come to do the second side is never as easy but if you do it like this and you concentrate on what you're doing you, this, is, this is so easy. So cutting a little of the teeth away allows you to slide this tape far enough up so you've got something to grab hold of. That's why we do it. Um, and the teeth will sit just nicely in there and that's just clicked in and I haven't done anything really. What it has done is given me these, this edge here for me to grab hold of and hold while I pull the zip. But you, what you want to do is to make sure that your edges of your um, fronts are equal. Okay, now let's have a look. That is absolutely not equal. Can you see? So there's the beginning of one. It's very difficult when you've got on a, when it's a small little project and that's the beginning of the other. So I'm, I'm kind of an eighth of an inch out. So I want to just readjust that. So pop it back on again one side. Well, you didn't need to do it or take it all the way off. But just pop it back on. Let me just, oh gosh, you know what it's like. If you're trying to do this so you can see. And that always goes on really easily, even though I'm making a mountain out of a molehill with this one. <clears throat> Come along, little zip. That's it. Um, <laughs> and we want to try and get those lined up. So when we put the um, this right-hand side on, we want to make sure that our seams are lined up. Can you see? That's a lot better. If I do it like that, that's a lot better. So I think that that needs to go up a little bit more. So let's just do that. Or you can, in fact, let's keep it where it is and I'll just snip this, this away a bit more. Like everything, it's all to do with practice. Okay, practice, practice, press, practice. And it's better that you practice without somebody else watching. I always find that to be easier. So these are perfect now. So just ignore my, my wadding snip that away that's perfect now so now I'm ready to finish um, sewing the base to the front pieces and we've got the perfect finish to the bag so you can see if I pull it through make sure your zip the zip slider is out of the way of your machine so pull it up a little bit top top push your, your zip ends out and then all we're going to do is stitch along there to finish and close our, our base okay so I'll do that now. I'll just go on the side camera. Okay, let's make sure I don't lose anything. So start where you finished. Um, you can trim your, your zip tails off if you want to. 
just line everything up and just go for it a little bit at a time don't forget I've got it's not not a brilliant fit I must admit but like I say I think your um the recipient of your bottle will be more interested in the contents so all the way round and break my thread there we go so that's stitched the rest of the base on and now we can trim with your use your paper scissors and that's now beautifully finished you can see what that looks like so really what you want to do is now I, I this machine doesn't zigzag okay it doesn't zigzag so you could pink and shears the edge or you can zigzag the edge to be honest if you've got the white wadding showing you might perhaps want to zigzag it a nice sort of closed zigzag almost not quite a satin stitch but you know that sort of thing um, just to make it really super neat and tidy so if we just go to the overhead now and push it through there we are so now we have a beautiful second popsy in fact let's go to the front it'd be easier won't it to see it second popsy I've got a bottle just a minute <laughs> what is it fever tree rhubarb and raspberry tonic water well it's going to be a little bit small for this but there we go it's a wee bit small <laughs> there we are so that's our second popsy it could probably do, do with another press just to finish it off make it look gorgeous just trim that thread there we are and it's all ready now to present to your your host your hostess with the mostess or your or your host <laughs> and uh, i think it looks great actually i quite like the gold zip with that looks quite trendy doesn't it that's why it's smart and don't forget that elvis collar so we can you can sort of you know bring it out like that in fact that looks quite nice with the handle down to be honest there we go this looks really stylish doesn't it i quite i really quite like it and you could you could put a little rick rack around there or ribbon you could obviously you can have a gift tag hanging from the handle so if we turn that around you can see the handle you have a little gift tag hanging from there so there we are ready to gift ready to give away super so like i said if you struggle with that way that I put the base on and the zip slide and all of that because I know it's quite complicated in a way then sew the zip in as you normally would but you can see it's quite a small base quite a small bottom so you might you might want to um, have a have a think about that anyway so there we are two popsies hmm, I like them both <laughs> I'm not sure I want to give them away to anybody right <laughs> <laughs> there we are i hope i hope you uh, hope you enjoyed that uh jackie says thank you so much lizzie for a super demo and your help much appreciated you're very welcome mary says thanks lizzie for another brilliant demo you're very welcome um and uh okay so um tigger's eye is having problems tigger the best thing you can do sorry i abbreviated your your handle is to email us at hello at uh, lizzycurtis.com so hello at lizzycurtis.com because it's possible that your questions won't be answered now because we're finishing the live so best to email us um so yeah so that's it that's us done and next week we've got our lovely kath who's got another super pattern suitable for party do you notice i've got the party uh quilt topper behind me there and also i wanted you to see um Juniper, which is my nod to Seminole patchwork and quilting. And Juniper, that pattern, that pattern is two pounds at the moment because it's on special offer this week. Um, and that's uh, that's Juniper. It's a, it's really, really super pattern. So to get it for two pounds is an absolute bargain. Right, that's it from me. I hope you've had a lovely evening. Gosh, we're dead on eight o'clock. Of course, I timed it specially. 
Um, yeah, so I hope you have a, a good rest of your week. We've got uh, um, the rest of, as I say, the rest of the week to go. If you're one of Abby's superstar stitchers, then she's live in her group on Wednesday evening. Um, if you're one of my members, um, Goldies or Stroke Nearly Platinum members, then I'll be live on the Facebook group page on Thursday, and we'll have another little stitchy project for you. Um, if not, if you miss all of those or you can't attend any of those. Then next Monday at seven o'clock is our calf with the Making It Monday A47. Um, oh, don't forget also, um, Abigail's doing a Stitchmas um, on YouTube, but actually on the 26th of December, I start a 12 day, um, it's the 12 days of Christmas stitch along every night. Um, for that next 12 days after Boxing Day. So if you're on your own and you need a bit of company, then I shall be live with you every day. And I think we worked it out today that it'd probably be eight o'clock every night and then it doesn't clash with anything else. Right, thank you very much for your company. It's been an absolute treat to see you. Um, it's, it's always lovely. I, I can never read all the lovely posts on here, but I do appreciate you. Um, you're, you're truly marvellous and thank you so much. For your support, without you, I would not be...